Um, yeah, so um, it's visible. Yeah, um, we can go on. Yeah, hi everyone. Um, hope everyone is doing well. Um, today, what we're um, what we're going to be going over is going to be um, we're going to be continuing over um, yesterday's session um, and looking a bit more into um, EDA um, and yeah, continue using the same data, the same diabetes data set that was used yesterday um, and yeah, go through some um, EDA processes. Um, so first off, uh, what is EDA, right? Um, so exploratory data analysis, it is simply just an approach to analyze data sets and um, summarize their main characteristics. Um, as you've seen in this week's challenge, um, over on the telco data you, you were provided, um, there are 150,000 rows. Um, and so it would, um, it would be very cumbersome and very difficult to actually, um, to, to actually analyze um, each row. And so there, is, there needs to be a succinct summary uh, of what the data is saying, uh, which is actually the final challenge, um, which is the final challenge or the business objective, um, whether or not to buy or sell um, that telecom company. And that data, uh, and that data should, um, should give you um, enough summary to reach that decision. Um, so yeah, the main characteristics include um, detection of mistakes, um, any outliers or abnormalities, um, which we're going to talk about later on, um, and determining relationships among um, various variables we have within our data and um, assessing the relationships um, between exploratory and outcome variables. Uh, yeah, so we're going to start off with um, the same data frame, um, but the one which has already been cleaned. Um, so as you see, uh, what we're just doing here is copying the data frame into a new variable um, and seeing what types are. Okay, so let us um, first start with um, univariate analysis. So what univariate analysis is analysis which is done on a single variable. Um, and so, which would mean um, doing analysis on a single column um, and um, regarding and disregarding um, any other variables that um, exist. Uh, so for example, we can take, we can do univariate analysis on maybe just the race, um, uh, yeah, on the number of lab procedures um, and so on. Uh, so what we're doing here is um, we're plotting the distributions of uh, the number of lab procedures which uh, were in our data. Um, so this is simply just uh, a histogram plot. Uh, this this plot hist uh, variable was um, if you've opened the if you've opened this notebook, uh, which I believe is in the Google Drive that has been shared for you. Um, it is simply just a utility function, uh, which is using Seaborn. This SNS is um, for Seaborn and plotting the distribution, which is the histogram that you see below. Um, yeah, and so this allows us to see that, um, so we're just zooming in into a single variable and seeing what that variable is actually telling us. And so this number of lab procedures is um, a numerical variable and you, can, and you can see the distributions of it. So um, from this, you can see that the highest number of lab procedures um, with over 4,000 um, lab procedures was just a single, a single um, lab procedure. So just to maybe zoom in into that variable, um, we can just go into the, into the first row and we can check the number of labs of procedures. Um, okay, so 
over on our first tool. So um, if we take a look at the first tool of what we have, um, we have a female um, we have a female patient, female Caucasian patient, um, and which has had um, 41 uh, number of lab procedures. So number of lab procedures is um, yeah one of the variables um, in our data we're exploring, and so yeah we're just we're just uh, plotting the distributions of it. Um, so this can this method is actually. Um, taking in a couple of arguments, which is the column name, the specific data frame. So um, uh, I saw that uh, you did actually mentioned the concept of keeping um, code really reusable and um, dry, and so not repeating yourself. So you can see that this um, histogram plot is a, a reusable plot, which we're um, using to plot over our variables. Um, and so, see that from the distribution of the number of medic medications um, that the most number of uh, that the most number of medications that have been provided are um, 15, med 15 medications and so um, this this looks like more or less uh, um, normally distributed data um, which we can see here um, and so another um, core concept which is the describe method, if you go to the pandas um, describe method, um, it is to generate a descriptive statistics um, over on our data. Um, you can call it over the entire data frame. Uh, in this case, it is actually called on the on a single column as we're doing univariate analysis. Um, but this describe method is a very powerful uh, method which is to generate a descriptive statistics, um, which can generate a descriptive statistics over our entire data frame um, using, uh, um, yeah, over our, our entire data frame. Um, and so it summarizes the central ten tendency, um, which is simply just telling us um, the, the middle of our data. Um, yeah, so if we were doing multivariate analysis and we wanted to see, I'm not sure if it, I don't think it's deprecated, yeah. So this would give us um, the analysis um, over the entire data frame. Um, and we could see the distribution um, where we could see the mean, where we could see the standard deviation um, and the various quartiles uh, of our data. Um, yeah, so over to the next concept of outliers. Um, so in every case, it would actually really depend on how you are dealing with outliers. Um, for example, uh, if let's say you were working on um, a fraud detection system, right? Um, and if, you, if you're working for a bank um, and you are you're working on a fraud detection system to prevent credit card frauds, right? Um, and so probably 99% of the time on um, transactions that are coming in um, are probably going to be, um, are, are going to be correct transactions, right? They're not gonna be fraudulent transactions. Um, and so, if you're making a, let's say, a machine learning model to detect whether or not a transaction is legitimate or not, um, if you disregard outliers um, from your data, those outliers might actually be the frauds that you're, you're actually wanting to catch, right? Um, but in same, in, but in some cases. Um, if you really zoom in into the outliers, um, okay. uh, yeah, so if you really zoom into 
zoom into some of the outliers, they might also end up um, being um, being data points that you actually um, need to drop, um, right? Because um, they're they're not really doing anything to your analysis. Um, they, they they they're usually um, going to be something you're some things you're uh, going to dive deep and look into based on the problem that you're trying to solve. Um, and so the the easy way to um, to figure out the outliers is to simply do uh, a box plot, right? So. A moment. Uh, okay. So yeah, again, um, outliers can occur due to uh, due to multiple reasons, um, but we can we can specify a box plot, and we can um, also use a quantile function to describe and to figure out the data which is outside ninety nine percent of uh, the distribution. Um, and so for this specific example, um, we're plotting the, we're doing a, pl uh, we're doing a box plot um, for the time and for the, for the time spent in, for the amount of time in the hospital. Um, so you can see our distributions um, ranged from, from one time from a single visit to the hospital um, to 12, but there were, there were um, occurrences um, where there were, where there were 13 and 14, uh, number of, number of visits to the hospital. And so you might decide that these are really, um, infrequent cases and, um, don't really do much for what we're trying to do. And you might drop them. Um, or also you might, this might be something you'd really want to look into and, um, really understand why those specific patients um, actually had to come to the hospital that that amount of time so depending on the on the analysis that you're trying to do um, you would deal with um, the outliers um, separately uh, so this plot box um, again what we're doing here is um, we're plotting, uh, we're trying to see the outliers um, on the number of lab procedures that were done. Um, so if you see the number of lab procedures that we actually went through, um, you can see that um, our, um, yeah, majority of our data is within the range of zero to around 97, 98 number of lab procedures. Um, and so you, you might disregard this or actually um, take this into consideration based on your case. Um, yeah, so what we're doing here is, um, yeah, we have this fix outlier method. Um, uh, fix outlier method where it is simply using um, NumPy um, and to actually uh, take the columns of um, where the distribution is outside the range of 95 percent of our data, um, and it is taking the columns median to actually impute to yeah to actually change that end to make the, to remove the outliers. So, uh, yeah. so if we now see the box plot, the, we've used the median to change the values, which were, to change the values, which were outside of um, the range, the specified range, which was 95% in our case. Um, yeah, so again, we're still just doing univariate analysis. Um, yeah, but we've been using, we've been doing univariate analysis on the numeric, on numeric values that we have. Um, but when you, when you're dealing with data, um, even on this 
um, experimental case, you can see that um, we have numerical var we have numerical variables and we also have categorical variables, um, right? Uh, so we have the race, we have the gender, um, and so it, it isn't a it isn't a single type of data. So what we are doing here is um, this plot count. Uh, if we go into the plot count. So what what this is doing is um, it is again using Seaborn to count the amount of to, to count the amount of similar values that are um, in each category. Um, so for example, if we see the distribution of the race, um, we can see that there are more number of Caucasian patients um, than any other patients. Um, this race of other um, is is uh, is a collection of the uh, is a collection of data where the distribution is when where the race is is neither of this four values um, is neither Caucasian, African American, Asian, or Hispanic. Um, yeah, and so um, this plot count uh, this plot count function that we're using is to count the distribution of the race. Um, so this is one way we can um, visualize our categorical values. Um, and also, yeah, like we saw, like we saw in our data, um, saw that the, some of the categorical values were, yeah, there were race and gender. Uh, yeah, there are other categorical values here. Um, but that, that is not necessary for the analysis that we're doing at the moment. Um, yeah, so that was univariate analysis, which was um, an analysis which disregarded um, all the other variables that were in our case and just zooms in into a single variable and allows you to see how that variable allows you to get a summary of what that variable is um yeah and so that's it for the univariate analysis um the second type of analysis is multivariate analysis um which is the analysis that is done over um, two or more columns um which is where we actually see the relationship uh between between two or more variables right so an example might be okay so let us we have said here that we have um a lot more caucasians um um in our data sets right um and okay so from those caucasians um we might be trying to figure out okay what is um the number of female caucasians and uh male caucasians or um okay so is the, are there more male african americans um that are actually coming in and coming into the hospital um than the male caucasians um and so this um uh, this analysis where we're trying to find relationships between uh, multiple variables multiple features within our within the data within the data that we're exploring um, is multivariate analysis. Um, so scatter plots. Um, so we can actually also use scatter plots for um, univariate analysis. But uh, what we're simply doing here is uh, we're trying to see um, we're trying to see the relationship between the number of medica medications and the number of lab procedures. Uh, so as you can see, this this isn't that linear and um, this is a very distributed graph, but uh, it is more or less saying that as probably as the number of lab procedures has increased, um, num there are cases where the number of medications has also increased, um, but there, there isn't, this really isn't telling um, that much at the moment. Um, yeah, and so again, this, uh, what this is stating is um, just the relationship between the number of lab procedures versus um, the amount of times uh, in the hospital that the patients uh, has been in. Um, 
yeah, and we're passing in the race uh, to actually see um, to actually see the race um, as uh, as like as a as as a way of um, actually classifying our data. So the race you can the the pictures here actually allow us to see the distributions of the race as well. Yeah, so another way we could actually do multivariate analysis, you could, so you, as you can see, the methods that are actually working to analyze a single variable and the methods that are used to analyze multiple variables are actually more or less the same. We still use the box plot up there when we uh, were zooming into a single variable and doing this exploration um, on a single variable. Um, but also when we're trying to actually um, see the relationships between multiple variables, we're also again using the box plot. So this is just a combination of box plots. So in the univariate analysis, um, so in, in the multivariate analysis right now, uh, this what we're trying to do is see the number of medication outliers um, in each race, right? So in Caucasians, the number of medications are actually all within a normal range, right? Um, we're not seeing um, a very significantly um, high uh, number of medications um, that are actually provided. Um, so the Caucasians um, are within within the um, are within a are within similar range uh, of distributions. Um, but if we go here, the African Americans, we can see that um, around 31 number of medications were specified for maybe one or only a couple of people, um, and also on the on the other races. Um, but you can see because we had we actually had um, if you go back um, over the distribution of the race, we actually had a lot more a lot more Caucasians than any of the other races available. Um, and so if race was not actually taken into consideration, um, all of this number of, the number of medications that were actually uh, provided might have also been in the, in the normal range. And that might, that might end up being, um, again, something to look at. Um, and here, what we're trying to see is see the number of medication outliers um, over the over on the race column, uh, which is something similar to the to what we did above. Um, we have the number of medications. We get an outlier um, there the over on the male distribution. Uh, so the males. Um, so in in one of our in on one or a couple of male patients. Um, the number of medications was actually significantly higher than um, the data distribution that we'd like to look at. Um, so you might remove that outlier or decide to do something else. Um, yeah, so um, another tool to actually, another really powerful tool uh, over that we can use when we're um, doing multivariate analysis and trying to see the relationships between multiple columns um, is using the pair plot. So what the pair plot actually allows us to do is to see the to okay. So what it allows us to do is to see the relationship between that that variable itself. So allows us to see the univariate analysis over that variable only, um, and also the relationship between other columns and other variables um, in our data set. Uh, so what we're doing here to, to use the pair plot are just taking a couple of variables, which are the race, um, the time in the hospital, the number of procedures, um, and the number of medications that were provided. Um, and again, um, we're using the race as um, a differentiator of the hue. Um, this dia kind is, um, so if you see here, um, 
like okay so if we go back to the univariate analysis um where is it yeah so if we go to and see this one of this variables um what we're plotting here is a histogram and so the kde um the kernel density estimate if i'm not mistaken um is just um giving us an alternative of the histogram and allowing us to plot things more smoothly um these are just curates arguments which are uh specifying the color and the height of it um and so if we see the time in hospital um this this diagonal right here is the relationships within the single column so the the time in hospital here is again the time in hospital here so this is the univariate analysis um over of of that individual single column um yeah and this allows us to see the distribution between uh multiple variables like the number of procedures number of lab procedures and the number of medications that um that are that are that that is in our data um yeah and so we can uh so we use this to we use this EDA to actually um, visualize our data um, and see what um, and see what our what each of our variables look like um, and what each of uh, what each of the variables actually have what what each relationship uh, between the variables um, actually looks like. Um, yeah, and so you can do um, different uh, types of comparisons, comparisons um, between um, the variable itself, comparisons between uh, numeric and categorical variables, uh, compare, comparing numeric variables themselves, comparing categorical uh, variables with categorical variables. Um, yeah, and so you can, you can use this visualization um, over on your report or actually um, have a written summary uh, over your findings by going through the ADA. Um, yeah, and I think that's about it. Okay, so yeah, post, okay, process. I see you from this rate. Yes, hello. Hello, yeah, uh, I can hear you. Uh, my question is about the boss plots. Once I'm able to view the outlines, uh, outliers, please, I would like to know how I can retrieve the, retrieve the lines uh, which are outliers. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Uh, I, I think that after the boss plots, we can visualize the outliers, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, I, I, I want to know those lines, those values in the data. I want, I want to get them and look at them. So how to get them? Oh, okay. Um, um, so you can use, you can use uh, different pandas methods for that. Uh, not completely sure. Um, uh, how to get them? Okay, one moment. Uh, and this fires. So if we go up as to and see how we actually used to plot the fix out layers yeah so if you see here um we're actually using yeah we can use the np.where to get the variables which have uh outliers so uh, one method would be df.x uh so np.where uh df experimental um where okay so for example let's look at um one which uh 
had significant outliers. Uh, so the number of lab procedures actually had a couple of outliers, right? So, um, where is it? Yeah. So we can go here where the number of lab procedures um, is greater than the DF, uh, DF experimental number of lab procedures um, dot quanti. Um, and so you can specify this to be um, 0 0.99. Uh, for example, if we're checking to find those values. And so what we get here is, what we get back here is actually the index. And so if you go over uh, and use the iLock, so the indexer to actually find a specific, that specific index. Uh, so we can get 49008, um, I believe this is a numeric value. So df dot iLock, which is the index locator should be able to get it, to get you that data. Um, and so you can simply just uh, outliers, uh, you can save this into a new file where you get the outliers. Uh, I believe this would be a type of right array, okay. Uh, yeah, and for I um, in outliers, you can go ahead and uh, print that um, using that data frame dot iloc. So get those locations um, where those outliers exist. Uh, yeah, and you can handle them as you go on. Uh, I guess um, that answers the question. Uh, yes, yes, it's good. Okay. So, so thank you. No, no problem. Um. Okay. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Uh, thank you, Ramesh. Uh, and what I want to ask is if there are uh, uh, parameters that uh, help us um, uh, decide on the quantile and uh, the method we used in the time management. Um, okay, so um, like I said, I think before, like definitely, it, it depends on the case that you're doing. Um, if it's just it's probably just for this um, week's challenge, um, I definitely saw some numbers where um, the data duration um, was really significantly um, different from the normal distribution of the data. So definitely dropping uh, a couple of sessions where um, the outliers are really out of bounds. For example, even using 95% or 99% um, would actually work. Uh, but for other cases, for example, um, like I said before, um, for a fraud detection system or for maybe uh, like, let's say, a uh, cancer uh, benign or, uh, or, ben or a benign or malignant tumor um, classifier. Uh, so in cases where um, you'd actually really want to look into the outliers, um, you, would, you didn't even drop the outliers. But I, in this week's case, um, I think any, any number where you can still get a, a good enough summary, uh, yeah, you can, you can use as your range. Uh, okay, related to this, um, maybe. Uh, there are situations, as you say, there are situations that uh, we can drop the outliers uh, in case uh, the, the problem statement is a, a critical one to consider outliers. So, uh, what to do then if we are not to drop uh, outliers? What's the best uh, solution to that? Um, okay. Uh... Okay, so if you are not to drop outliers, um, in situations where you're not to drop outliers, or 
um, in this week's challenge where, where there is a case? Not, not at all related to this week's challenge, but there are situations where you can't uh, drop out letters. Um, yeah, so for example, okay, um, I think let me go back to that um, fraud detection system. Um, so, um, okay, so like that specific outlier might end up being exactly the thing that you actually um, want to look out for, right? And so you, the modeling that you go on for um, would then go on to actually focus uh, using those outliers. Um, so like, for example, let's say um, you're just going to be building a classification model, um, which would take in some data. Um, let's say it takes in the location, um, it takes in the purchase amount, um, and then it is trying to classify whether or not that transaction um, is fraudulent or not, right? So if you went on over the EDA and you had uh, a training, you had data which um, which had anomalies, uh, which would have actually been, which would have actually had, which, have, which would have actually been labeled as those fraudulent transactions, um, and you later go on to actually train um, that classification model. Um, that would classify um, that would classify those transactions as fraudulent and non fraudulent you wouldn't you you have actually dropped the most relevant data um, to train your model right um, so that classifier model would probably do really bad um, if you are actually evaluating um, let's say on a couple of classification metrics um, like maybe accuracy uh, because you've already dropped those variables. Um, you'd get really high accuracy, but your model, when it came, when it, when it's actually in production, um, would do really bad. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I, I don't. I, I'm not sure if that answers it. Yes. Uh, of course, of course. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah. Process again. Okay. Process. Yes, I would like to understand the codes in the function fixed outliers. Uh, I, I, I got the first part, but after I'm seeing the F colon median and the F colon, so I would like to know what the second part is doing. Okay. Um, so I think we can go to the MP dot word numpice. Documentation and we have a look. So, so what what it's taking is it is taking the columns which have a quantile of 0.95. It is taking the median. Okay, so it is taking three arguments at the moment, right? So and the column itself. Uh, where is it? Yeah. So the first one is actually the condition um okay so when only one condition is provided the function is a short tank um yield true or i like the values from which to choose x y any conditions to be for capital trans element okay so yeah so this is taking the condition which is giving us um the index array um and this is taking the the actual median from the entire column of our data set. Um, and the second argument is, yeah, I think the function that is called FDRAs and P to order range. Um, Um, uh, it's 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 all about uh, the way that uh, the function is calculating uh, the outlier parameter, which is uh, um, the median. So the outlier is just uh, outlier as per the median, and uh, the the last one. Um. 
I'm sorry, is it for my end or? Is, uh, uh, okay. the, is Yeah, can you can you go again? Yes, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, you were breaking up. I think that the issue is about his network. Ah, okay. Um, yeah. So I don't. I I do believe that even without this parameter, it is supposed to impute. Uh, it is actually supposed to impute the median. So I think we can go on and again have a look. I'm not completely sure of what the third argument is doing. Um, so, if x, f, so number of, number of lab procedures, we can have a new one. So I believe this should give us uh, okay, so either both or neither X or Y should be given. Uh, okay, so what are X, X and Y? So are I like values from which to choose? X, Y, and condition need to be forecastable to some shape. Um, okay, so the, so, okay. So what it is doing is the first one, uh, yeah, this is the utility functions, right? Yeah, okay. So what it is doing is the DF column dot median. So this both are arrays. Um, where the df dot column dot median is taking the median of um, the entire series of the column, um, and the second one is giving another array um, of the entire column series, um, and so we have that specific condition, um, and we have um, these two values, which is. Uh, the median, which is the median, uh, which is actually being imputed into the into the uh, outlier value. Um, yeah, I, I believe that's that is that is what it's doing. But um, yeah, I think I'll definitely uh, I'll definitely make sure uh, run it on the data and text back on Slack in in the next fifteen twenty minutes. Okay, but I you think that not give the wrong information. I think that when you use it for the first time, you use just the condition. So oh, I, I would like to know if the two other parameters are really uh, important. Um. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Definitely. The the error that we got here was actually also um, x and y are actually optional. So even if you actually drop this, the length values of one does not match. Um, yeah. I think let me definitely let me uh, look more into this. Um, uh, so, 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 sorry for interrupting, but uh, the, 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 method, the median uh, or what other uh, method is, I think, is essential because uh, outliers are uh, those values which are far apart from uh, the most dense uh, data points. So the method that we specify is uh, the way to calculate the distance of the point, which is so-called outlier, from uh, other uh, most of the data points. So the method is essential, and the last column and section may be optional. Uh, I think. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I think. Uh, okay. Maybe just to add up on that, I think when we first used the np.where in the first condition alone. 
he's only selecting the outlier points but what extent why are doing uh, are the first one will be returned when the condition is met or when the condition is true but when the condition is false we are returning the second value so when there is an outlier it's replacing it by the median or by the maybe can you get back to that code yes it's good so but i would like to know if uh, it makes sense to replace the outliers by the median or to replace yes, the outliers because, yes normally what you would do is outliers are points that will uh, really affect your distribution especially the mean or the average so the most common way to handle outliers is to replace the values by the median of the data so when there is an outlier it's replacing the x value is replacing by the median and when not it's just returning the column a. so we are imputing the outliers by replacing them by, uh, by the value of the median and when not we are just returning the value that's not an outlier okay okay so uh i would like to know if you advise us to replace the outliers in our challenge Yes, uh, sorry. I would like you if I would like to know if you advise us to replace the outliers in our challenge. Data. Yes, I think normally it's really advised to replace uh, outliers either by using mean or the median, but mostly we see outliers being replaced by the median of the data. Okay. So thank you. Uh, Providers uh, data types are uh, numeric. Uh, yes, yes, we will only be using median and mean for numeric uh, values or features. Okay. okay. It's good. So thank you. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Nitya, for clearing that up. Um. Yeah. Okay. So um. If anyone else doesn't have uh, any more questions we can um, end the presentation here um, yeah and if you have any more questions uh, hit us up on slack